The NASCAR Pinty Series wraps up its annual Western Swing here at this challenging quarter mile oval. As the season passes the midway point, expect plenty of action as drivers battle for every championship point. From Edmonton International Raceway in Wetaskiwin, Alberta, this is the Luxor 300, presented by Bayer. Welcome to the seventh race in the NASCAR Pinty Series here on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. We're at Edmonton International Raceway in beautiful Wetaskiwin, Alberta. And Adam, I call this track the little track that could. It's tight, but it breeds tough, gritty racing. You know, Ron and Loretta Thiering every year keep adding to this little dream here south of Edmonton. Quarter mile used to be a one groove track, but Dave, that second groove is really starting to come in. We're gonna see 300 laps tonight in front of a jam packed house. Well, as the drivers trap in, we prepare to fire up the motors. Let's take a look at the point standings as we hit the midway point of the season. Cole Powell in his first year with the Pinty Series leads the points, but it is a tight battle all the way back to eighth. Did have some track repair occur earlier in the day. The local series tore up some existing patchwork last night. Ron Thiering and his team think they have it all under control though in turn four. And here's the other thing under repair, Kevin Lacroix, who sprained his ankle stepping off the wall in Saskatoon. His injury didn't slow him down. He sprained his throttle foot, had no trouble stepping on the gas. 12.7 seconds to set the E3 spark plugs pole position. Let's send it down to the mayor of Wetaskiwin and the good folks at Bayer Crop Science to get us going. You know, Dave, we learned in E3 Spark Plugs poll qualifying how important it is to back up your speed in practice. Kevin Lacroix fastest in practice. He was fastest when it counted in qualifying. Donald Teach had a great shot last season. He's going to start on the outside of row number one. On board with Brett Taylor from Calgary, Alberta, looking to put in a good run here today. And how about Adam Martin of Lightning Quick in practice earlier? And that was the example I was talking about. Practice great. Qualifying not as solid. He's got his work cut out for him. So does Jamie Krizik in the 34. Let's take a look at your clean flow starting lineup as the cars begin to roll. Kevin Lacroix on the inside of row number one. Donald Teach on the outside. Row number two has Mark Dilley in the 0-2. And LP Dumoulin always strong here at Edmonton. Back to the third row has Andrew Ranger starting alongside DJ Kennington in the 17. And to row number four, Alex Tagliani and local driver Noel Dalbert. As we move back to row number five, we've got Mark Antoine Cameron behind the wheel of the 22, and Adam Martin, there we find him in the number 19. Row six says Cole Powell in the three, struggling a little bit in qualifying, and Jamie Krizik in the 34. Row seven has Brett Taylor in the 46. On the outside of him will be Larry Jackson in the one. And in the eighth row, Chantel Kalika alongside Joey McComb. Rounding out the field in row number nine, Kerry Mix behind the wheel of the 04. Now you saw that shot as the 74 went through that concrete patch. It's just concrete dust. That's the patch we were talking about in turn number four. So likely when these cars get up to speed, it'll blow away. But let's take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. It's 300 laps on this quarter mile oval. So they're gonna be driving through that patch 300 times under acceleration out of four. Last year, Alex LeBay won this race. We're gonna have a different winner this time around. Let's get an update on a couple stories we've been following with Tom. Todd, Todd. A couple quick things before we go green, guys. DJ Kennington swapped out a motor after practice. Strictly precaution, said it just didn't feel right. He was really happy after only two laps of qualifying. Also with us again tonight, J.B. Krizik from Grand Prairie, Alberta, participating in this Western event as well. Also had a little trouble with the motor and the power steering pump, but they are good to go tonight. How nerve-wracking is that? These teams prepare for hours, dozens of hours in the shop. You show up to the racetrack and develop a problem. Hopefully they have things sorted out. We're about to go green. Pace truck pulls down pit lane. It's Kevin Lacroix and Donald Teach on the front row. The field bunches up here at Edmonton International Raceway, and we are green. into third. Behind them, it's chaos, Dave. Everybody fighting to get down to the bottom. 
And there you see the field moving through that patch. A little puff of concrete dust, but nobody getting really crossways, so it appears to be A-OK. -okay. A lot of drivers were a little bit concerned about that in the early laps, but it looks like their fears are all for naught as Kevin Lacroix leads Donald Teach in the early going. Mark Dilley in the Leland 0-2, though, up inside the top three. What a turnaround for that team from a year ago. Yeah, hopefully can keep it up front. And, and on the track repair, if it's going to be a problem, it'll come off in chunks. So concrete dust, that's a good sign, as long as we don't see chunks of asphalt. Listen to those engines eat as they aren't on the gas very long here at Edmonton International Raceway. A tight quarter mile track and the drivers say you're turning a lot of the time so you don't get a lot of time at maximum acceleration. And if you remember Saskatoon, we could hear the drivers kind of roll into the throttle. Sometimes they burp the throttle. Here, you get to a point where you just step on the gas. There's a good battle for 12th spot between Brett Taylor and the 19 Johnsonville Ford Fusion of Adam Martin. Taylor working that inside groove, and there's the one of Larry Jackson behind the wheel of that car today, the CBRT number one. We ride on board with Brett Taylor, now Larry Jackson making that move, and you can see the sun is going to be a little bit of an issue down the front straightaway into turn number one. Thankfully, those, hosp well, those hospitality suites will only block a little bit, because <laughs> the sun's fairly big. It is. It, it tends to take up a lot of space. We quick ride on board with the 43 of Chantel Kalika, right, currently in 15th, but here's a battle for third. And it's Adam, or Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Dodge. The number 27 moves up into third spot. Mark Dilley's sliding back now on the outside. LP Dumoulin going to take advantage. And you know Andrew Ranger wants to bounce back from the twin 125s in Saskatoon. They were a disaster for the driver from Roxton Pond, Quebec. Let's go for a ride with DJ Kennington. You listen to that brand new power plant sing on this Castro Edge Dodge. Example of the beautiful province of Alberta as we bring you race number seven of the NASCAR Pinty Series. The Luxor 300 presented by Bayer Crop Science is brought to you by Mopar. We built it, we know it. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By Pinty's, making great food fun. And by AGI, makers of Batco, Westfield and West Steel. Kevin Lacroix has led all of the 37 laps here in Edmonton. He's now starting to work lap traffic. The next car in front of him is going to be the 19 of Adam Martin, who runs in the 14th position, Dave. You know what's interesting about how strong that 74 bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge has been in the early going, and he's got Chantal Kalika in the AGI number 43 just ahead of him as well. Last two years here in Edmonton, he's run ninth last year and 15th back in 2016, so he hasn't had all that much luck here. If you want to change your luck, come out with a race car that's about half a second quicker than much of the competition. I mean, you stand a good chance. But joking aside, LP Dumoulin is keeping pace with Kevin Lacroix, but he is clearly the class of the field today. Good look there at Mark Dilley in a battle with Jamie Krizik, a battle for ninth position. Krizik to the inside. They'll make a little contact. As what normally happens in the tight confines, the five, the Emco Dodge of Noel Dowler in there too. And Dowler had a couple great runs, top tens in Saskatoon in both of the twin 125s. He's looking for good things here again today. And Krizik and Dowler on their way forward. Dilly's going back. There you go, clear all around. Let's go, 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 go. Kevin Dowler, longtime supporter of Canadian Motorsport, multi-
multi-time multi NASCAR champion. Of course, Noel, Adam Dowler also races in NASCAR at karting. Griffin, who is starting in karting as well, and Kevin Stadt was also involved in racing for years. Lots of racing Dowlers, and there are cousins who have raced all throughout Alberta as well. So when they come to Edmonton, they all tend to gather here at the racetrack. Yeah, that's for sure. And Dave, we want to send out prayers to longtime series motor builder, Louis Bazio. His wife's been in the hospital and we wish her all the best. Definitely thinking of her here today. Also, speaking of throwbacks, Carl and Daryl Farr, both former Cascar competitors, both in the house, and also KN series alumni, Xfinity drivers as well. So good to see them here at the tracks. There was always great support for stock car racing out in the West and some really solid family names that, that we will all remember. Indeed. That was a good battle for third there between the 47 of Dumoulin as we look a little bit deeper in the field. Battle for 12th now between a pair of teammates, cars out of the CBRT stable. Larry Jackson behind the wheel of the number one and there's the 46 of Brett Taylor. And this is a good place for Brett Taylor to be following Larry Jackson learning a little bit mid-race, but they both have to go because we're riding on board with your race leader. And it's about to put them a lap down. Yeah, when you look in the mirror and the leader's about to put you a lap down, I think you're done with lessons for the day. It's time to get moving as we have a look at Cole Powell in that three car. Mark Antoine Cameron on board the GM Pie number 22. Only about 3,500 kilometers from home, but GM Pie always brings a large contingent of fans. Did you hear the RPM jump when Cameron got in the corner of Powell? Had to be about 300 RPM as he lit up those back tires. They worked the outside of Chantel Kalika in the 43. Well, Powell, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, off in qualifying, but he's worked his way up through the field a little bit. He's not up as high as he needs to be, of course, comes into this one leading the NASCAR PT Series points. You know, we were talking about Western drivers. We should mention guys like Wade Lee. And you remember Dan Shirley? Oh, yeah. Well, his son, Max Shirley, does the marketing work at Wyan Group Raceway, where we raced our last event. So awesome to see the next generation. He's also a race car driver. Lapping up to 11th spot now is the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. The bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge dives underneath the Leland 02 of Mark Dilley. There's Chantel Kalika in the AGI number 43 just ahead as well. How frustrating must that be? Mark Dilley qualified third. He, this was the view he had coming to the green flag, the back bumper of the 74. Now he's going to lap down. That could ruin the day. This is a great battle, though. We've been watching between the three and the 22. Again, it's a battle for seventh position. But Cameron has been able to get about that close to stealing away the spot. Now he's got a great run off of turn four, and he'll take over seven. Turn four on the outside is tough. There's a spot right between three and four where if the driver doesn't get the car pointed down the front stretch, they wash up the racetrack. Cameron was able to take advantage and pick up that spot, but Cole Powell right on his bumper. I wonder if he remembers it was Cameron who knocked him sideways about 10 laps ago. Oh, and side by side now. This is for third, the 27 of Andrew Ranger and the 47 of L.P. Dubalé, and they're into black traffic, and just ahead is the 24 of Donald Teach, who sits in second. So Andrew Ranger takes advantage of the fact that Larry Jackson was up on the outside. Goes to the inside of Dumoulin and pins Dumoulin back to the fourth position. And follow him to the next group of cars. You got no choice now. First car one lap down. And that's what's important. Kevin Dowler, you're the first car one lap down, so we know should a yellow come out, you're going to get the free pass. But also, there's all sorts of clear racetracks. So the message was clear. Don't let anyone buy you. Oh, nearly contact as the 27 sneaks underneath the 24. Andrew Ranger takes away second spot from Donald Teach in the Circuit Acura number 24. And here comes the WeatherTech Dotsia number 47 of LP Jubilee. Yeah, that's the, the byproduct for racing on our track this tight. If you lose one spot, you run the risk of losing two or three at a time. Not a 
Double team settles down, though, gets back in line, and that's important to do. As you mentioned, you don't want to keep that inside groove open for too, too long. So Andrew Ranger digging underneath the 34 of Jamie Grizzard. Let's go down to Todd now, who's got an update on your points leader, Todd. Yeah, guys, keeping an eye on our winner from Saskatoon at race number two, Cole Powell. Started 11th and told me earlier today it's kind of a funky, tricky little track out there, but he seems to be getting the hang of it. Up to seventh already and now setting his sights on the top five. Crew Chief Craig Master says we're not bad, but still a little room for improvement. So far, so good for the number three. Cole Powell has fallen back to eighth, but him and Mark Antoine Cameron both keeping pace in their Chevrolet Camaros. Well, they're keeping pace with each other, but the rearview mirror shows Kevin Lacroix. Look at that smoke out the back of Andrew Ranger in the 27. That's huge. That's your second place driver, the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Looks as though he still has fire under the hood. That car's still moving very well. In through three and four, though, and now the black flag for your second place driver. Dan Hawkins waving the black flag and not a lot of smoke in the cockpit of the Ranger number 27. But NASCAR officials waving the black. The, the windshield on the 47 is pretty clear. Yeah, but Andrew Ranger really needs to stop. He has to come in. Have another look. This was in one and two. Something is amiss. That's a lot of smoke. And here he comes down pit lane. A hard left-hand turn from second spot. Todd. Finally, that 27 makes its way along pit road. Power steering the problem. Andrew Ranger reporting to the team. This is the same issue that they battled in Saskatoon. I have uh, having trouble with the power steering. Andrew Ranger stops and returns back out. They are calling him back in again. NASCAR officials are ordering him to return to pit road. Yeah, generally when they call you to pit road, it's not a stop and go penalty. They want to see what's producing the smoke and determine whether it's okay, if it's safe to send the car back on the racetrack. A couple crew members did look in the wheel wells of that car, but Andrew Ranger is still on the racetrack. He has now gone a lap down to your race leader, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And look at Lacroix now in, lapping your points leader, Cole Powell, a lap down here in Edmonton as Kevin Lacroix is putting a spanking on the field. We're 45 minutes south of Edmonton, Alberta, in the small city of Wetaskiwin. Tyler Grandham is the mayor of the city, but tonight Kevin Lacroix has the keys to the city. He's led every lap of this Luxor 300. He's putting a whooping on this field, and Andrew Ranger is laps down, but it is, you can tell he looks angry behind the wheel, the way that car is acting, and if he doesn't have power steering, this is a tough, tough task. Well, crew chief Dave White has been bleeding with NASCAR regarding the two black flags. They had an issue last week in Saskatoon in race number five with their power steering, but this will definitely hurt their championship hopes. Kevin Lacroix works the outside of Jamie Krizik, who is now two laps down in the 34, but I'm happy for those guys. 100 laps into the race, they were concerned that engine wasn't going to make it to the start of this event. Kevin Lacroix, though, has been a master in lap traffic. As here's a good look at deep in traffic. The 1, the 0, 2, and the 46, all battling for ninth position just behind the 27 of Andrew Ranger, who's several laps down. And let's keep in mind, Dave, this is a brake race. So around the midway point of the race, this race is going to come to a halt. They can all come into the pits and make adjustments. So these teams, it is a race now from lap 105 where we are to about lap 150 for the top five to try to stay on the lead lap. Uh, yeah, and it, that's all the cars that remain on the lead lap is the top five, believe it or not. That's the torrid pace that the bumper to bumper dodge has been setting here today. Three wide, down the back straightaway, and into turn number three. Taylor on the inside of the 02 of Dilly, and Lacroix is on the ultimate inside along the curb. And Dilly stuck it way up on the outside, though. He didn't really have a choice in the matter. <laughs> but when your car is that good like Lacroix is, that was a no-risk maneuver for Kevin Lacroix, because he was able to turn it that low on the racetrack. He might as well. funny, I spoke with crew chief Don Thompson Jr. of the 74 after qualifying. Of course, they set a good pace on sitting on pole, but I said, Don Thompson Jr., how good is that car on the long run here today? And he just said, I can only give the driver what he wants. You know, and that's important. Don Thompson 
Robinson Jr. knows what makes a fast race car, but your driver has to be able to drive it. So it's a, it's a it's always a compromise between what Don Thompson knows from his experience but what Kevin Lacroix wants. Oh my goodness, what a move! And that's second place, the 47 of LP Jubilee involved in a little skirmish as they go three wide once again, deep in lap traffic. This three is in sixth position, one lap down. Jamie Prizik is the sandwich or the meat of that sandwich in the 34. And there's just no no reason for this to be happening but twice in a row it has. You can't take the racer out of the race car drivers. We look at Donald Teach. He's quietly having a nice run. He's sitting in third spot. He clearly needs some adjustment. Same with the EpiPen Rona 18 of Alex Tagliani. Stay on the lead lap. Get some adjustment at the break and see if they can do anything with Kevin Lacroix. Tagliani sitting in fourth spot. Traditionally runs very well here at Edmonton. And there he is, the final car in the top five. The Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. New engine under the hood is purring just fine. Well, and DJ was so happy with the race car, he was going to park it in practice. He didn't want to run any more laps. And he finally thought, you know what? I got to build some adjustability into it to, you know, to see what the racetrack does. That's when he felt that the engine just seemed a little bit flat. They looked a little further and decided they wanted to swap it out. So fortunately, DJ ran some more practice to discover the problem, and now he's running in the top five. It's a veteran move, though. He knows what the engine sounds like, what it should sound like, and when it feels flat, he knows it's a problem and it's not going to last 300 laps. But what's surprising so far, we're 118 laps in here today. No caution. We've been green all the way. Tight little racetrack that breeds caution, and we've had none. Kevin Lacroix continues to lead. In 2014, the NASCAR Pinty Series first made a visit to Wetaskiwin, in Alberta at Edmonton International Raceway. We're back. I'm Dave Bradley. Adam Ross is along with me in the booth. Todd Lewis is trackside as we bring you the Luxor 300 presented by Bayer Prop Science. We're closing in on that break we've been talking about. There's Donald Teach, the inside of Cole Powell. Not a battle for position, but Cole Powell is right now. Oh, he's not in that coveted free pass position. Mark Antoine Cameron ahead of him would stand to get his lap back. And the car in the middle of the 24 of Donald Teach is in third position. So he's spread out from the fourth place driver, which is Alex Tagliani, but the shark circling is coming. That's the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. He's been eating up this field lap after lap. Andrew Ranger in front of him, many laps down. So all of these cars in turns three and four, and I don't know that any of them are battling each other for position. But when you can turn a track in less than 13 seconds, 130, 140 laps under green, you're going to wind up with many different cars with many different numbers of laps complete. As a matter of fact, if you look just ahead, the 17 of DJ Kennington is in fifth. They're on the same straightaway, the leader in Kennington, as this is a battle for ninth spot. Just ahead of your fourth place driver, Alex Tagliani, but it's Larry Jackson up on the outside, Brett Taylor down low, and here comes Tagliani, who doesn't want to wait. He doesn't want to waste any time. He needs to get by, and there he goes. He finds the open lane on the inside. They're in such a rhythm after all this time. You just want to keep going forward, keep going forward. In truth, lap 146, don't risk anything because that break is coming. As long as the leader's not behind you, looking to put you a lap down, he's in a pretty secure spot right now. So he goes by and the battle for ninth continues on. <laughs> These guys have been all over each other since the drop of the green. It's a battle for ninth spot between Taylor and Larry Jackson. They seem to part. The 18 went through and they continue on. Watching this battle, Kevin Lacroix leads the way. On the lead lap, it is only those five drivers. DJ Kennington in fifth, Mark Antoine Cameron runs sixth right now. We are getting near that midway point. Cole Powell needs to find a way around the 22. And that midway point is important because the driver one lap down, the first driver one lap down, will get their lap back. And the, the way the free pass works at the midway break, normally you can't pick. You have to wait until one to go. When it's the midway break, you get your lap back right away, and you get to pit with the lead lap cars. So we're watching the laps click down. There's 150. We'll come up to 151, and there's the halfway mark. 
No caution yet. It is on or around lap 150, as the drivers are told in their pre-race drivers meeting. And the battle is on with Cole Powell. He has gotten around Mark Antoine Cameron. Cole Powell, that's a huge pass for Powell. And now caution, flag flies. We have hit the halfway mark. Caution for the first time and not for an on-track incident. But there you see the three of Cole Powell around the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. We'll have to wait for official timing and scoring when they go back to the last completed lap. But I believe Powell was ahead of that 22. What a wonderful crowd here at Edmonton International Raceways. We take a look at the VP Race Fuels race summary. And this one's been all Lacroix. Kevin Lacroix has led every lap. Kerry Mix is out. So is Joey McComb. Five cars on the lead lap. There'll be six with the free pass. Field is stopped. The action's about to pick up. Todd standing by. Todd. Signal has been given. Crews can commence work on their cars. The 74 receiving a full can of Sunoco fuel. Check with crew chief Don Thompson Jr. Kevin Lacroix very quiet on that radio and very happy. They'll now start working on the tires. The 47 of LP Dumoulin also pretty happy. They will make some minor handling adjustments to that 47. Also on the 24 of Donald Teague, a first-time winner in Saskatoon. Crew chief Greg Gibson says probably make a little wedge adjustment, but that's about it. They don't want to do anything too drastic to that car. They're also pretty happy. Well, Dave, remember, weather conditions are changing. The sun has almost gone down, so the track may come to them. They don't want to over-adjust the second half coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Luxor 300 presented by Bear Spotters high above Edmonton International Raceway as we get set for the first restart of the night. Cars now packed full of fuel. Adjustments have been made. Four good gear slicks have been bolted on, so it's a brand new race, right? The front two rows are on the lead lap. The very last car in line, Cole Powell, is on the lead lap. And I'm sorry, DJ Kenny. The front two and a half rows on the lead lap, and Cole Powell at the back. Those are the six cars battling for position at the front of the race. And we're back up to speed here and with Tasco and Alberta as the field thunders in through one and two. Amazing that dust still coming up in turn four, but the track is holding up. We've seen them race side by side. In fact, we've seen them three wide up in turn four. So great job by the staff here at Edmonton International to make repairs. You've got to be able to adjust on the fly, Dave. How about DJ Cannington, the 17, now up to third spot. So whatever adjustments they made on that car, definitely to the driver's liking as he's jumped a couple of positions since the restart. Tagliani's going to follow him through in the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet. What we learned in the first half is try to keep the 74 of Lacroix in your sights. The big thing we learned was these drivers can drive on this racetrack, so we didn't have a yellow in the first half. It's not out of the question that we wouldn't have a yellow in this part of the race. These cars are all working fairly well, Dave. What makes you wonder, too, how much the lead five drivers are saving their equipment at this point. I mean, a driver like Tagliani has historically been very, very good here in Edmonton. In 2014, he led 268 laps. 2016, he led 213 and picked up the win. And Kevin Lacroix is en route to doing something similar here tonight. Let's ride with Jamie Krizik. Well, it was a brief ride. <laughs> what we learned, there's a driver who's two laps down to the field in a race car that looks fairly comfortable. There's, there's not a big gap between lead lap, one lap down, two laps down. you got to run your own race. There is a battle for ninth spot, Adam Martin, Brett Taylor, but Adam, we've had 10 now female drivers in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Can you name them all? I couldn't name them all, Dave, until <laughs> we talked about this a little bit. We did. I got to seven. I think I got to eight, and then, and then I couldn't remember two of them. It was funny because NASCAR officials sort of sprung this on us and said, did you know this? So we, we put our thinking caps on and we went through. So. We've got Destiny Klim, Ashley Toss, Shannon Harding, Shania LaForce, Isabel Tremblay, Erica Thiering, Sarah Kordaching, Caitlin Johnson, who's now Caitlin White, and Mary of Dufault. And if you add in Chantel Kalika, who's in today's event, that's your 10. I was a little disappointed I didn't get them all. Dave, I've been to every race. I know. 
Since the I was disappointed in you. <laughs> but that's fantastic. So Chantel Kalika doing a nice job. She is. She got to the checkered flag of both twin 125s. Her goal is to do it again tonight. So far, so good here in Edmonton International. Welcome back to the Luxor 300 presented by Bear, the seventh race on the NASCAR Pinty Series schedule here in 2018. That's a battle for fifth spot between Cole Powell and Donald Teach, who seems to be dropping back in the second half. Well, like we said, you could make adjustments at the halftime break, but you had to factor in the changes that were going to happen on the track. You see the sun is mostly set. It is not shining directly on any part of the racing surface now. That makes a huge difference in these race cars. And as the leader crosses the line, there'll be 100 laps to go in this 300-lap event. But Cole Powell was one of the stories from Saskatoon picking up his very first NASCAR Pinty Series victory, his first in a full-bodied stock car in NASCAR competition. I'm sure it was quite the celebration. And while we're talking about interesting NASCAR facts, did, did we ever decide? I don't know that we've had multiple winners in the same car with the same car number. I think you're right about that, actually. You know, nobody has won in the 22 car outside of Scott Steckley. Nobody has won in the 17 car outside of DJ Kennington. But now, Jason Hathaway and Cole Powell have both won in that three car. And Cole Powell not satisfied with where he is. He is now hounding the 17 of DJ Kennington. And keep in mind, Powell started at the back of the pack. DJ Kennington restarted in fifth. So Cole Powell is marching towards the front in that battle for third. Kennington in third, Powell wants it in through lap traffic, outside and inside. Chantal Kalika, we've been right on board with the driver of the 43, there's an education. She just got a big surprise from Andrew Ranger, who made it three wide up the inside, but we learned the first half, you gotta go, you gotta go, every turn counts. Back on board, the three of Cole Powell, and he does look a little bit better on the inside. The 17 in the upper groove in the Castro Lance Dodge is DJ Kennington. Yeah, Kennington's car just it looks to be tight. Maybe it's loose and he's chasing it up there, but either way, that is not the most effective line here at Edmonton International. But a veteran like DJ kind of goes where the car wants to go and makes the best of it. Cole Powell and the cops build all. Number three showing a little bit of body damage on the right front corner. There you see it. Just him hard racing, trying to work his way up through this field. For fourth spot, Cole Powell and DJ Kennington side by side. Quick ride along the 24 of Donald Teach. And you see some of them running right down over the yellow. That part of the racetrack is flat, Dave, so you can affect the race car by running down on the flat. And these guys better get a move on. Now Kennington up on the outside. Teach seems to be a little bit off the pace down on the inside groove. Oh, problems for Teach. It almost looks like the rear end's out of place, like a track bar, track bar mount is broken. I, yeah. I thought I saw the white wall tires as he went by the last time. It appears as though he's hit the wall We're right on board. And you could hear it, and that car just did not want to turn down into one. And I believe the rear end has indeed been knocked out. That was on lap 165 when Donald Teach hit the wall. He is in his pit stall. The engine is off, and the crew is taking a look. But this will be a long repair. Yeah, that's not the kind of thing you were able to fix and get back in the race. That's one of those where you fix it and get it rolled onto the trailer. Confidence was so high after Saskatoon. There's crew chief Greg Gibson down off the box taking a look and seeing what needs to be done to get that car back in this race. But Donald Teague, after winning his first NASCAR race in Saskatoon, heartbreak here in Edmonton. And I wonder, NASCAR official Sammy Putnam was there on the scene laying under the car. And there's a longtime crew member. I wonder <laughs> if, it, if his urge is to go grab tools and work on it. He's a great official. Good to have Sammy on the team. Great mechanic as well as LP Dumoulin in the 47 continues to give chase. He's riding second behind LeBron. The population of Wetaskiwin, Alberta is nearly 12,000. 
And nearly the entire city is here today watching your race leader, Kevin LaCroix, split traffic as he continues to put cars laps down. Unbelievable what Kevin LaCroix has been able to do, and he's closing in on DJ Kennington, who is on the lead lap, and LaCroix would put, love to put him one lap down. Todd's with the driver, who is many laps down out of this race. Yeah, we've got... Guys, we've caught up with a disappointed Donald Teach. We saw that there was a light brush of the wall a bit earlier. I don't know if that was the problem that put you out. Yeah, probably that was the problem. We were so loose that tried to keep the car, you know, down low. And I went loose, so I touched the wall. I thought the car was okay, you know, because we were still fighting with the three and uh, DJ. Uh, but, you know, my mistake. We, uh, we need that, uh, that quite good points here to be in the battle chips and the championships, but... The, Bad break for us tonight. Bad break. Yeah, he'll be back in action for the next stop, the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. And that'll be an uphill climb for Donald Teach, who's stronger traditionally on the ovals than he is on the road and street courses. But here, look, fifth place going a lap down almost. Now the 74 of Kevin Lacroix gets the better of the 17 of DJ Kennington. Yeah, DJ's going to put up all the fight he can, but he's given Kevin Lacroix the bottom of the racetrack. And how about that, Donald Teach? You never have to wonder what he's feeling. No, he lays it all out every single time, but DJ Kennington in fifth spot, believe it or not, one lap down. That will be disappointing for the driver from St. Thomas. Big picture, he's got to keep the hammer down. It'll be a good point today if he can stay there, but disheartening to watch Kevin Lacroix drive away. And there's LP Dumoulin, so two cars between himself and the race leader, but he's staying on the same straightaway as Kevin Lacroix. Well, I was going to say the WeatherTech Dodge, the driver, LP Dumoulin, has kept the race leader honest nearly this entire distance. He's one of the few drivers who's been able to keep that 74 at least in sight. Kevin Lacroix has been so wow. good as Andrew Ranger makes contact with Chantel Kalika. A couple of cars, several laps down. It's, it's almost been like watching a game of horse. Kevin Lacroix sort of makes the move. He'll go to the outside, he'll go to the inside. Alfie Dumoulin has matched him move for move right up until he got to this DJ Kennington, Andrew Ranger, and Lacroix was able to get through in a hurry. Cole Powell. 
racing NASCAR styles. LP Dubalay and the WeatherTech Dodge, the number 47, your new race leader for the first time all evening long. We've had a lead change, and this one comes with 14 laps to go. 14 laps left. Let's have another look. LaGuardia just, he handed LP Dublin because by getting into Tagli Annie like that, who was already moving up the racetrack, LaGuardia, and I understand what he's doing, but it doesn't give him a whole lot of options. Take nothing away, though, from the driver of the 47. He did have to muscle his way to the inside and stay there as Tagli Annie did not want to be pushed out of the way. Tagli Annie's now settled into third. We're under 10 to go. Tagli Annie chasing LaCroix. Cole Powell, what? A regroup for that team. The three cars now in fourth spot. And I'm watching the, the electronic timing. Dumoulin and Lacroix are running laps within a thousandth of a second or two every lap. Lacroix will close in a tenth of a second. LP will pull away a tenth of a second. There's a second gap between them. Kevin Lacroix needs to pick up the pace. DJ Kennington in the fifth position. Mark Antoine Cameron. Good run in six. Noel Dowler inside the top ten. How about the run by the one of Larry Jackson currently running in eighth spot? Kevin Lacroix, a man on a mission. It will be five laps to go this time by an LP Dumoulin. He's holding a pretty wheel right now. Got to be frustrated for the driver of the 74. So dominant, so long in this race. And now sitting in second, chasing the 47 of LP Dumoulin. And that's the battle, and I'm fascinated watching the two of them. Lacroix trying to close in, and LP Dumoulin has not made a mistake. This is not for position, but DJ Kennington putting in laps up on the outside, top five run, but there's the man of the, I'd say the man of the hour, but the man of the moment. <laughs> That's right, and you should mention too, the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron in that battle with DJ Kennington. Cameron is a lap down to Kennington in that spot, but look at the crew, they're just sort of like, did this just happen? Remember Saskatoon, LP Dumoulin took the lead, cut down a right front. He fell to 16th place, and that's where he finished. This could be vindication as the white flag flies. LP Dumoulin will have a quarter mile to make it around. In 2015, he was second. In 2016, he was second. But it's a win in 2018 for LP Dumoulin here at Edmonton. Eric Benoit, the spotter for LP, is a clear by three as he comes to the checkered flag. Vindication, listen to the crowd in Edmonton. They are still going nuts. What a show. We'll be back for Victory Lane. Welcome back to a wild one here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Let's go down to Victory Lane. Todd? For the second time this season, L.P. Dumoulin is climbing out of that number 47 with a smile on his face and victorious up on the hood and roof of that car and getting a huge congratulations from his team. L.P. Dumoulin stalked that 74 of Kevin Lacroix for so much of this race. We talked before and you said, be there at the end, be there at the end. You were there to take advantage of the opportunity. And now yeah, you get a shower. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. Good job, man. Yeah. Good job, boy. I got it. Thanks. First of all, thanks to the fans. My sponsor, WeatherTech Ben Mar. WeatherTech, three more years together. We want to win more races. Ben Mar as well. And my crew chief, Robin, my car chief, Ben. These guys have been working like crazy all winter long. My engine guy, Andre the Doc, and all the other boys and girls on the team. We're not done with this thing. We're really happy. This uh the end of the race was really exciting. I'm sure the, the fans loved it. I loved it. <laughs> and uh, she deserves it. She's a good girl, and we've been doing well the, the whole season so far. And I think that uh, uh, it was time to get that win. I mean, uh, it was not an easy win, but we got it. Fair and square. Very happy. LP Dumoulin, a win on the road course, a win on the oval, and now taking over the points lead again. Awesome. He showed a lot of poise in the laps after that restart because things were going sideways for a couple of laps. Let's look at our top 10, Dave. And you look at drivers like Mark Antoine Cameron, Noel Dowler in seventh spot, Brett Taylor inside the top 10, and Mark Dilley salvaged a top 10 run in the 0-2. Let's head down to Todd, standing by with your second place finisher. 
Kevin, it looked so much like you were going to score another victory here, but it got wild on that late restart. How's the foot? And uh, tell me yeah. through the, how it went through that last restart. Well, the foot is okay, really. It's uh, We don't think about it uh, in the race, but uh, it was nice. Even though I didn't win, uh, we led a bunch of laps there. And, uh, you know, what happened in the last few laps, it's, it's just why we love NASCAR. It's uh, That's what happens. And uh, today is not our day, but uh, some of the time it was our day. So, uh, you know, it will be uh, next time we'll win. Kevin Lacroix, gracious, coming away with a second place run. Dave, mark this on your calendar. That's a different Kevin Lacroix than we have seen over the years. He's won a lot of races, but him not winning this race and his outlook on it could be the reason we're talking about him at the end of the season. He's six right now in the points, but that kind of maturity will lead you to a title. We do have a new points leader, Ian L.P. Jumelay, on the strength of today's win, and there is the smile in victory lane. Look at that trophy. The great people from Bayer, the Luxor 300, they put together some really cool hardware for this race. This NASCAR on TSN race has been brought to you by VP Racing Fuels. By Honey Goo from Clean Flow. What honey of the loo. And by Total Quartz Engine Oil. High technology for your engine. Every year in the NASCAR Pinty Series, the championship run really takes shape in the Western Swing. Three winners in three different races. But up next, we go to the streets of Quebec, the Grand Prix at Trois-Rivières. See you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.